cradle cap is a calm and benign inflammatory rash that occurs in infants. Although it could look unpleasant, the infant is generally unaffected by the rash other than the possibility of experiencing mild itchiness. It is characterized by greasy flakes with a yellowish scale. Underlying erythema may or may not be present. It typically occurs on the scalp, but can also occur on the face, around the ears, and in the interjugginous areas, such as the axilla and groin. The diagnosis is made clinically, so specific testing is not needed. It is important to note that the rash is not contagious or due to poor hygiene, and it usually resolves spontaneously within a few weeks to months. Initial treatment of cradle cap is usually conservative. Application of emollients overnight and or frequent shampooing with non-medicated baby shampoo can help loosen the scales. A soft toothbrush or fine tooth comb can be used to gently remove loose flakes or scales. The lesions must not be scratched or scraped. Doing so can result in injuries, scarring, and infection. Dermatitis herpetiformis is a chronic skin condition that is characterized by eruptions of burning and intensely pruritic papules and vesicles. The underlying skin may be normal or erythematous. The sites that are most commonly affected include the scalp, back, buttocks, and extensive surfaces of the limbs. The areas which are less frequently affected and usually spared include the face, groin, palms, and soles. The papules and vesicles usually occur together in clusters, resulting in a similar appearance to herpetic lesions, and hence the etymological origin of the name. Since the itchiness can be overwhelming, the vesicles may not be present on physical examination due to scratching. Instead, there may only be visible evidence of excoriations, erosions, abrasions, and crusts. It may also occur that the burning sensation was relieved following rupture of the vesicles. Areas of depigmentation or hyperpigmentation may occur following resolution of the lesions. Now we'll look at a few more images of dermatitis herpetiformis. Erythema nodosum is a hypersensitivity reaction that occurs due to a large variety of etiologies. Unfortunately, the cause remains undiscovered in a large portion of cases. It presents with erythematous tender nodules that are most commonly located over the shins bilaterally. The nodules are round, immobile, and do not ulcerate. They may be warm to touch and painful. New nodules may erupt over days to weeks. The diagnosis is made clinically. If the presentation is atypical, then a biopsy can confirm the diagnosis. It resolves spontaneously without scarring. However, residual hopper pigmentation may remain for weeks to months. Although the lesions are relatively benign, their appearance may be a hairbinger of underlying systemic disease such as malignancy. Other than symptomatic treatment, management is dependent on the underlying cause, if identified. Head lice is a common infestation, which is mostly spread via direct contact with the head of an infected individual. While sharing combs may or may not lead to the spread of infection, animals and pets are not considered to be vectors for the transmission of lice. Common symptoms include itchiness, scalp dryness, and irritation. A diagnosis is established with the visualization of live lice. The use of a fine tooth knit comb, either wet or dry, aids in the detection of lice and is better than simple visual inspection of the hair and scalp. Knits are more easily detected than live lice, however their presence does not confirm active infection since knits can persist following successful treatment. Permethrin is applied to dry hair and left on for 10 minutes. This treatment is then repeated after 7-9 days if lice are still present. 
bedmates should be treated prophylactically, but other household members should be examined and treated only if infected. In Pitaigo, it is characterized by erythematous lesions that are covered with a honey-colored crust. The lesions are usually asymptomatic, but they can cause itchiness. The lesions begin as macules and papules, but then quickly fill with fluid and rupture. Now a distinction is made between the three types of impetigo. In non bullous impetigo, there are small vesicles that quickly burst and are often not present upon evaluation. In bullous impetigo, there are large flaccid bullae. In both of these subtypes, the fluid-filled lesions rupture and result in a superficial erosion. In the third subtype, ecthyma, the lesions extend into the dermis, resulting in ulceration with violaceous borders. The lesions are highly contagious, and there is often a history of close contact with persons with similar lesions. As well, the lesions can be transmitted to other areas of the body. A clinical diagnosis can be made based on characteristic skin findings. Bacterial culture and sensitivity are indicated when there is an outbreak, MERS is suspected, or if the patient fails to respond to empiric therapy. For those with recalcitrant impetigo, a nasal culture should be performed to check for carriage of group A streptococcus and staphylococcus aureus. Topical antibiotics are equal to or more effective than oral antibiotics and are recommended for infections with a limited number of lesions. Although the condition is self-limited, treatment is recommended to prevent the progression of the illness and to prevent the spread of infection to other people. Disinfecting agents do not have proven efficacy and are not recommended. Indications for systemic antibiotics include ecthyma, which can lead to scarring, widespread infection, systemic involvement, and local outbreak. Children may return to school following 24 hours of antibiotic therapy. Post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis is a potential complication of impetigo. It occurs when the pathogenic organism is a nephrotogenic strain of group A beta-hemolytic streptococci. Unfortunately, it is not prevented by antibiotic therapy. Molluscum contagiosum is characterized by flesh-colored, dome-shaped lesions with a central dimple. Although the central indentation is characteristic, sometimes it may not be evident. As well, there may be other findings such as excrescencies coming out from the center and some growths may have a stalk. Mild erythema and swelling of individual lesions can occur and is not necessarily an indication for antibiotic therapy. Rather, inflammation of molluscum can actually be a sign of impending regression and should not be mistaken for bacterial infection. The lesions may appear on most areas of the body, but are not typically found on the palms and soles, and the mucous membranes are also not usually affected either. To prevent the spread of infection, the lesions should be covered during the day with clothing or a watertight bandage. However, it is unnecessary to prevent children from going to school or daycare. Recovery from infection does not confer immunity, and thus reinfection is possible. Molluscum contagiosum is common in children, but when it occurs in adults, then it should raise suspicion of an immunodeficiency. Tinea corporis, also known as ringworm, presents with reddish round patches on the skin. It is a fungal infection of the skin, and despite the name, it is not caused by a worm or anything of the sort. The skin infection is referred to as ringworm on account of the circular shape with central clearing, resulting in a thin ring-like outer rim. The edge of the rash may be elevated and the affected skin can be dry and scaly. It is also often pruritic, that is itchy, and associated with hair loss in the infected area. The infection can occur in most areas of the body, However, it goes by a slightly different name depending on where it is located. For example, when it occurs on the scalp, it is referred to as tinea capitis, while groin lesions are referred to as tinea cruris. Tinea corporis is contagious and readily spreads to new sites and to other people. Infection can occur from contact with fomites or infected pets. The diagnosis is made clinically, that is, the characteristic appearance of the lesion is sufficient to diagnose the infection. Occasionally, however, microscopic visualization of skin scrapings may be required. The infection is usually treated empirically with topical antifungal drugs, with or without topical corticosteroids. As well, the affected site should be kept clean and dry. A visible reduction in the rash typically occurs within a few days. 
If the infection is widespread, then an oral antifungal agent may be required. To prevent spread of infection, fomites such as towels should be washed and not shared following use.